Watch this bit. This is good. Mm. Hello and welcome to another video and Atari VCS, they're, well, they're proud of their Atari and what's going on with their new system. Mm. Um, they've released a, a new email with a load of information which may assuage some of the problems that people think they may be having uh, or may just cement the fact that this thing's never coming out whatsoever. Hello backers, fans and followers. Things have gotten really exciting around the Atari office and in the Atari VCS engineering lab. We know people are talking about the big Antstream arcade announcement. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about it because they don't think any of this is going to happen. But the PCB board photo we shared triggered plenty of its own conversation and speculation as well. Mmm, it certainly did. While we definitely have plans to follow up the Antstream partnership with more news about games and content, we will now shift the conversation back to the status of the Atari VCS hardware. And it says jump over to Medium, and I'll go to that uh, thing in a moment. Because that just shows a new blog that has lots of information, lots of lots of new photos and illustrations to share, etc. But before I get to that, it says, I love this, complete your backer kit surveys. Because basically, if you don't give them their, you know, give them your information, such as your address, they can't send it to you when it's made. It's never getting made. You may as well tell them to send it to the moon because it's got more chance of getting to the moon than it ever has of getting to your house. This is vaporware. It is not happening. <sighs> Let's have a look at the article. And here's that article itself. Atari VCS, plastics, thermals and internals. A peek inside the engineering lab factory and the Atari VCS itself, along with some hints of what's next. Shipping it may be, if they've got anything to ship, that is. Who can tell? So that's a nice big zoomed in picture of the, the real wood. Real wood. It's got real wood on there. Have you seen that? Hey, is it real wood? Mm, nah, it doesn't really look like wood. It looks like sort of um, some sort of veneer. That's real wood. Maybe that's the real wood they're talking about. The real wood on the table. Maybe they're going to make the Atari VCS out of that. Instead of vaporware. Ooh, somebody stop me. The ongoing journey of the Atari VCS from mysterious teased concept... <laughs> Mysterious D's concept, Vaporwire, to Indiegogo, uh, Indiegogo sensation. <sighs> That's one word for it. To fully realised product nearing mass production has been a long one. Fully realised product, interesting. Uh, filled with plenty of twists and turns, you don't say. There's still so much to do before the team feels it can change the Indiegogo status from prototype to production. Well, making a prototype is always a start, but we get closer each day. Mm, probably closer to uh, the Cayman Islands with all your money. As we've always said, a lot of things, the Atari VCS is not like other game systems. Yeah, they exist. It's meant to be your machine. So many PC in that case, with numerous capabilities that allow for customization and personalization of both the hardware and software. So if it falls, you know, if it falls apart, then you're going to have to reprogram it yourself, quite most likely. Even if it does come out and they go bust with all your money, then you'll just be, you know, searching about on forums or Reddit or whatever, just trying to work out a way to make this bloody thing work. Today's update blog refocuses on the hardware side and brings lots of photos and detailed descriptions covering the past several months of shame. Sorry, the past several months of development that we are excited to share. Ha, ah, this is interesting. The first thing we'll talk about is the photo of the PCB board. Now, Surely, not PCB board, PCB, printed circuit board. Otherwise, it's like PIN number. PIN, you don't say PIN number because it's PIN is personal identification number. Otherwise, it's not saying personal identification number number. So this is a printed circuit board board. I digress. So the board we shared last time and have included again here. Hmm, that was interesting, that. That view is of the top of the Atari VCS circuit board. You should be able to quickly and easily spot the AMD Ryzen APU, along with the two USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI port and one power connector that will be accessible from the back of the machine. Well, you can't really quickly easily spot because to the layman they all look the bloody same, just slightly different sizes. Perhaps if you'd made a few, you know, sort of images of it in different positions, people might know, yeah, they might get more of an idea of what's going on here. Now, here we go. The large, relatively open space in the centre of the board is where the cooling solution, I mean a fan, will go. Now, 
if you saw the video from Spawnwave about um, he does the, he did a, a brilliant teardown of this of this board, saying that that bit in the middle where the the big space is that is normally where the RAM goes. Uh, why have they not put the RAM there? You know, and it says on here um, they basically put the RAM underneath, and it can be upgraded. Well. Surely you just put it on the top with everything else where you've got a great big board. I mean, and, and why... Hmm. Why do you put a fan in the middle on top of... No, you, you put... This this makes no sense whatsoever. In my PC, it has a CPU. The fan sits on top of the CPU. And then it blows air directly into it. So so this... Um, even though there's, there's no places for this... Stuff, maybe there's some holes there for it to possibly go. But none of the holes really line up with each other. Um... They say the fan's going to sit there. A blower, fan, and venting system. Um, what does it then just sort of have a load of wires going to the CPU? I this that, that makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know a great deal about this kind of thing, but you know, I know that the seat that the fan sits on top of the CPU, and that helps keep it cool. It doesn't sit somewhere else in the PC, and you just hope that the little wires get to it. <sighs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Anyway. Um, it says there's uh, towards the front of the board is an open area with receptacles that will accept an M.2 SATA, is it SATA, SATA, solid state hard drive so users can upgrade the internal storage. Why? So you've got to open it up to install a bloody SSD. Why can't you just make it easy, unless, unless this is somewhere else, make it easy to just stick in an SD card from the side so you don't have to open it up at all? I mean, come on. There are also two additional USB ports that will be accessed on the front riser of the VCS, right under the front fascia. And there's some pictures. <sighs> yeah, that's so... The pictures aren't really any different, they're just... We're not, you know, you're showing us some pictures, but you're not showing us underneath. We're just, we're not seeing much very much at all here. We're, nothing, you know, we're just seeing the same thing from different angles. We're not seeing... What I want to see, I want to see underneath it, so see where this bloody ram is meant to go. But if I want to see one end of it in particular, I want to see the end where the connectors are. And and that's not showing here. There's some tiny pictures of a you know, Atari VCS hardware devel devel development, development, pre-production planning this year. You know, that could be anything. The thermal solution mentioned above is a custom unit designed specifically for the Atari VCS. The AMD APU has thermal sensors and a fan controller system that monitors the APU temperature and adjust the fan speed according to the unit's needs at a given moment. It is supported in its efforts by the two large vent ports on the back fascia of the unit. Looking at the back straight on view, the slotted vents on the right rear will allow outside air to be sucked into the unit to cool the processor and other parts. Well, hot air is, hot air, there's a lot of hot air going on here. Hot air is simultaneously forced out and away from the unit through the vents on the left. You can't really see it on the photos. You can't see an awful lot on the photos, quite frankly, because usually it's absolute bull plop. But you can't really see it in the photos, but the vent slots are all angled to drive away air from the unit. There's also die cut the oh dear oh dear. There's die cut metal mesh screens to prevent small objects from getting inside the VCS through the open vents. <sighs> hmm. What have we got here then? So there's the oh god, it looks like a child's toy. Um then again, I had a sorry 2600 as a child, and then there's the fascia. Yeah, yeah, there's the real wood. I suppose it's real wood. Who knows? And then there's the side bits there, with the funny orange colouring the mesh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's move on. The tooling moulds for the Atari VCS plastic parts are largely complete and being put through the normal tuning process of final fit and finish. This is an ongoing process, so most of the photos we are showing here do not represent final textures. Yeah, because some of the photos actually show stuff existing. Uh, a new look far more plasticky than they will in the finished product. So, the engineer's first priority is always fit over finish. They work closely with the factory and suppliers to ensure that all the parts fit together smoothly and as intended. The parts go back and forth countless times for evaluation, with the teams making precise adjustments every step of the way, like showing... Uh, Tempest 4000 playing on a PC and play, claiming it's part of the actual uh, Atari VCS hardware. Mm. These adjustments all end up contributing to a flawless and trouble-free manufacturing process that starts with easy and fast release from the tools with minimal waste 
Many plastic parts can be recycled. Hmm. Yeah, like you're going to spend $400 or whatever on uh, a machine and then just stick it in the recycling. Well, maybe that's where it belongs. belongs who knows? And there's some pictures of the factory, a load of people dressed like Smurfs. And it looks like the weirdest sort of water cooling system going on uh, on those bottom two pictures. God alone knows what's going on there. That precision also contributes to smooth and easy assembly processes on the factory floor, where line workers will bring together the different parts, including the circuit board, thermal unit, plastic housings, numerous screws and connectors, plus final finished parts like rubber feet and the decorative front fascias in wood, plastic or carbon fibre finishes that make up a completed Atari VCS system. Meanwhile, all of the same things have also been going on at the Power A factory, where the awesome new Atari Classic joysticks and the Atari Modern Controllers are just about ready for mass production too. Once the teams shift into actual mass production, the factories have the ability to build thousands of units quickly and efficiently. And these are some pictures of... Not an awful lot, just basically the outside of the case. Hmm. This, this is $400, folks. This is what your money is going to. That's $3 million of uh, Indiegogo vaporware right there. You're probably wondering what happens when you turn on one of our pre-production Atari VCS units. Well, to be honest, so are we. <laughs> not an awful lot. To be honest, while these machines boot up using our Atari BIOS, which you've not shown us yet, Atari, they operate more like a computer than a fully functional game system at the moment. In other words, Atari Sandbox Mode, PC, is fully functional and the wind and machines will play games beautifully through a standard Linux, Linux or Windows installation. The custom Atari operating system is functional, but various consumer-facing software elements like the front-end graphics interface we teased at E3, along with our Atari VCS store framework and apps including Anstream Arcade and other native entertainment and game applications, are still in varying stages of development, and not yet ready to be shared or installed into these particular units. In varying stages of development, i.e. not started. We have all of this working in other environments, and it will be working on in the... We'll be working in concert on the Atari VCS soon. In concert? Is it... what? <sighs> Someone's been on the happy tablets today. We can't wait to show it to the world, and <laughs> we can't wait to see it. Oh, because it all looks incredible. In fact, we are very much looking forward to hosting a series of hands-on preview events later in the fall, autumn in the UK, for a select group of press and partners as soon as we are ready, i.e. the press who are going to give you positive feedback about it and not criticise in any way whatsoever. And there's some pictures there, just boot tests apparently. Now that's showing, uh, that machine is apparently showing the Atari VCS booting up, but then as I say, they had a Tempest 4000 showing supposedly uh, the game playing on an Atari VCS and it was playing on a, a PC. So that boot screen could be coming from a PC. You know, don't be fooled by what you see or hear as a jam said. This is probably a good time to remind our Indiegogo backers that you're not getting nothing. <laughs> Sorry. But the participatory nature of their support. As we have stated before, the Atari VCS hardware that early backers receive will be 100% finished. Well, let's friggin' hope so. But the software on these first units will be early access. Oh, come on. So you're sending out... You, people are spending $400 or so on consoles which don't work, basically. That's what you're saying. You're saying these con these machines will have bugs and just, just they will, they will you know, you'll switch it on and you'll be lucky if it boots up, basically. <sighs> Atari will be counting on our many thousands of backers to give us more money. So, to help improve and enhance the VCS experience, fucking hell, you're supposed to be, you know, experts in this field. And you, and, but you're asking the people who've paid for it to give you all the answers. We'll be counting on our many thousands of backers to help improve and enhance the VCS experience with all of the great feedback ideas, feedback and ideas we know they will provide in advance of our retail launch in spring 2020. Our goal, as always, has been to make sure that we ship our official products with the help of our biggest fans. Of course, we will provide many more details about the Atari VCS software directly to backers as we get closer to shipping. In the meantime, we hope you've enjoyed this latest behind-the-scenes tour. So, you're supposed to be able to buy it retail in spring 2020, which means the backers are supposed to get it by the end of 2019. 
it's as I say this and as it says on the screen earlier on October the 8th is a day today Christmas is two months away this ain't happening we have many more partnerships in the works and more new updates and announcements planned and very look forward very much look forward to sharing more with you soon hmm this is not happening this really isn't this is not happening whatsoever and they also have uh, responses let's have a good laugh at these responses Dusty Console says, glad to see the RAM and internal storage are user accessible for upgrades. Well, that's, well yeah, if you take it apart, but you, as I say, you could have just made it a simple SD card. And then you could, well, you know, or at least um, make it just, just like plug, uh, unless you can, plug uh, like a flash drive in there, the USB flash drive, and get your extra space that way. I mean, a or, or even like an external hard drive, so you don't even have to open it up at all. If you're just putting Atari games on there, they're so tiny, you could fit billions, on, if there were billions, on a flash drive. And you wouldn't have to open the damn thing up. Mars Mars, bloody excellent, thanks Atari. Hmm. Stephen Kresmer, awesome, thanks for being honest. <laughs> thanks for being honest? Oh, they're less honest than a politician. Hopefully it all comes to a successful end. Well, well hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Holger Boachers says, Are you kidding? Rob Wyatt and the people of his team left your company already and you did not pay your production bills to Tin Giant for more than six months. You have no streaming applications, no online game store, no game developers. This seems to be like a big hoax and nobody should take that seriously. I'm so happy I didn't support that project. And I've seen today the uh, the Register has a, an article about you know Rob, 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 Rob Wyatt's situation. It's, um, yeah, it's... So the, the the guy's gone, and you know, and people are meant to be finishing this off without the brains behind it. It appears. So this is not happening. Sean Del River says, "Awesome update 18. I love it so far. Can't wait for update 19 or more future updates. Wish you good luck and positivity." Donkey Boy is so excited. Hmm. Matt Saska says, "Really hoping that you listen to some of the recommendations early on. For one, I think this unit would stand out from the rest of the pack." If you could rotate an LCD TV 90 degrees, oh yeah, and play classic portrait arcade games to fill the entire screen. <sighs> Not massively necessary. Well, if you're playing Atari games, um, hmm. I mean, if it's got a Windows installation on that, you can turn the the other you know, desktop round 90 degrees and then turn your screen round 90 degrees if you really want to, but. You're not going to get people doing that, are you? Not the majority, but it's meant to be like a something that that is for families, not you know people who are going to start messing about with the orientation of the screen and then turning their bloody monitor around. Still, Rick J. Lucas says, Atari, on behalf of the collector community, can you tell us how the unique numbering will be implemented for collector's edition? E.g., will it be in engraved on the back of the unit? I imagine, I imagine anything like that will be. Part of the engraved on the on the board itself. That's all I can imagine. Or unless unless, unless, unless not engraved, but the serial number will be on the bottom of the console if it comes out. Mauricio Veronez <laughs> never comes. Yeah, pretty much. Mauricio speaks for us all. All of us who are sensible. Okay, well, thanks very much for watching. Please like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. And click on the little bell to get all the notifications and Q Genesis.